My name is Marga Zimmerman, and I'm a D4 consultant at Palo Alto Networks Uno42. Today I'll be talking about ransomware in the cloud, understanding the risks, and walking through mitigation strategies. To begin, let's talk about ransomware in the cloud at a high level. Ransomware is one of the many tactics employed by threat actors to disrupt applications running in cloud environments. When it comes to the cloud, there is a lack of understanding about how to effectively protect cloud infrastructure and realizing the potential impact ransomware has on cloud services. In the cloud, there is a different attack surface than traditional on-prem architecture. It's a lot easier to accidentally make a database or virtual machine publicly accessible with the click of a button, which also makes it easier for threat actors to exploit those public resources. The attack surface is similar to an on-prem environment in the fact that passwords and access keys can get accidentally leaked, which allows threat actors to directly access a cloud environment. On the plus side, due to the scalability and backup recovery options, there are a lot more options for data protection. Let's take a look at common ransomware attack vectors in the cloud. A common attack vector for cloud ransomware is object level storage. You can think of object storage as a type of storage service offered by cloud service providers for unstructured data. Each of the cloud service providers has its own service for storing data. Some include AWS's S3 storage, Azure's blob storage, and GCP's storage bucket storage. Threat actors choose these object level storage services because they usually contain various types of important data, anything from static website content to customer data. Threat actors hone in on these object level storage services because frequently account owners leave these storage either publicly accessible or with overly permissive policies that allow a threat actor to steal the data and or make the data inaccessible, eventually leading to extortion. Another example of where ransomware might appear in the cloud is in cloud file system services. Similarly to an on-prem shared drive, the various cloud service providers offer, offer file system services, which are all susceptible to ransomware. The method of encryption used by ransomware is just as straightforward as the object level storage. Once a machine connected to a cloud file share system is compromised, the file systems are viewed no differently than a normal shared drive and data is exfiltrated and encrypted. Even though it's a cloud service, the files themselves can be encrypted as any typical file can be in a traditional ransomware attack. Object level storage and file system services are susceptible to ransomware due to a number of risks. Misconfigurations, weak access controls, and inadequate security protection can expose these cloud resources to ransomware attacks. It is vital for cybersecurity leaders to work closely with their cloud engineering teams to ensure a strong security posture. The shared responsibility model adds another layer of complexity. When cloud service providers are responsible for the security of the cloud, customers must take responsibility for securing their data and applications within the cloud. This means that when preparing for a ransomware attack, the customer is in charge of the preparation and protection of their own resources, not the cloud service provider. To effectively mitigate the risks of ransomware in the cloud, there are several strategies we should prioritize. Let's take some time to walk through some examples. Implementing strong access controls and privilege management is crucial in preventing unauthorized access to cloud resources in the first place. Companies must make sure to utilize multi-factor authentication and role-based access controls and regularly review and update user privileges to minimize the attack surface. It's also important to apply data encryption mechanisms to ensure that even if an attacker gains access to your data, it remains unusable without the encryption keys. Encryption should be applied at rest and in transit. Making sure to regularly back up your data and establish a well-tested backup and recovery process is vital. In the event of a ransomware attack, 
having recent backups stored securely and only accessible with specific lockdown permissions enables rapid restoration and minimizes data loss. In the cloud, it's even easier to establish a good backup and recovery methodology because of the backup services provided by cloud service providers and the ease of resource deployment. And finally, we want to make sure your organization has robust processes for continuous monitoring and threat detection. There are some amazing solutions that provide real-time visibility into your cloud environment and with the proper detection configured to alert on suspicious activity and automated responses to detect and respond, you can be prepared to respond to potential ransomware threats effectively. Also with proper detection comes ensuring that you have a comprehensive incident response and recovery plan specifically tailored to ransomware attacks in the cloud. All of the cloud services have unique features, so understanding the tools at your disposal is invaluable for ransomware preparation. And with the nuances of cloud incident response, you want to make sure you have an incident response partner that can help guide you through the process. Ransomware doesn't go away when it comes to cloud infrastructure, so let's do our best to protect these cloud resources, just like we protect our on-prem resources. Here are a few ways you can engage Unit 42 services to help your organization. First, extend your team with a Unit 42 retainer and get our IR experts on speed dial, but also use those prepaid credits to be more proactive with managing cyber risk. Second, prepare for battle with our proactive services to help you take a threat-informed approach to your security strategy. And lastly, if you have an incident, call us. And remember to ask for Unit 42 by name with your cyber insurance carriers if you need incident response services. Thank you.